Air Force 6th Gen Stealth Fighter will operate five surveillance and attack drones. The Air Force may wind up building several manned variants of the emerging 6th generation next generation air dominant stealth fighter jet. The Air Force may wind up building several manned variants of the emerging 6th generation next generation air dominant stealth fighter jet and a small family of wingman type support drones as the cutting edge, yet largely secret aircraft program surges into the future. Delivery timelines and milestones are still likely in flux, yet one can likely expect accelerated development of the new aircraft, a demonstrator of which has already taken to the skies. Described as a family of systems, NGAD will consist of a manned stealth fighter platform and a small number of multi-mission drones operated called Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA, which will test enemy air defenses, blanket high-risk areas with forward surveillance and deliver weapons, with humans in a manned aircraft performing command and control. The ability for manned fighter aircraft such as fifth-generation stealth fighters to control the flight path and sensor payload of multiple drones is fast emerging if not already here, and the concept is to operate a paradigm-changing next-generation stealth fighter with unprecedented speed, stealth, maneuverability and lethality which is able to extend and expand its combat functionality by controlling multiple drones Hunter explained that the NGAD program will adapt and evolve in coming years depending upon requirements development and changing threats. Will there be manned platforms in two variants? We definitely want to think that through. The first task is to deliver a manned platform. We will evaluate along the way as there is an incremental approach to the possibility of variants, Hunter said. On the question of variants, one possibility being discussed is the prospect of a larger, longer-range variant for the Pacific which will need to travel great distances across miles of ocean without refueling, yet still operate with the speed, stealth and agility sufficient to prevail in a potential great power engagement. While the Pacific is a vast and seemingly limitless expanse of ocean, territory and islands, the European continent is much smaller, more compact and easily reachable across many countries. Also, the large amount of land in Europe means that aircraft can easily stop and refuel or be refueled in flight over permissive allied, non-combat areas. These tactical circumstances describe slightly different operational requirements necessary for a sixth-generation aircraft to operate in Europe as opposed to the Pacific, thus the possibility of two variants. Given that the NGAD program is being described in terms of being a family of systems, it would seem to make developmental sense and fall within the realm of the possible to build different variants for each theater. Next Generation Air Dominance Kendall said that the manned variant of the emerging sixth-generation next-generation air dominance family of systems will likely control as many as five drones at one time, seems to envision an operational scenario which will introduce new tactics, massively expand the mission scope of a stealth fighter jet and enable dispersed, yet networked weapons and surveillance nodes to increase attack and reconnaissance options. Many of the details and exact configurations of this small family of manned and unmanned platforms are either not available for security reasons or still evolving to a large extent, or both. The unmanned systems being built to support 6th gen manned aircraft are likely to emerge much nearer term than an operational manned variant. Of course the requirements for the unmanned systems, called collaborative combat aircraft, are still in flux yet Air Force acquisition executive Andrew Hunter told reporters that the drones are being built according to key operational imperatives. We need an aircraft that can perform operations in denied airspace and make sure we have the ability to establish freedom of maneuver. We've had successful uncrewed platforms going back decades. It's challenging to have a platform able to operate in denied airspace. The drones, or CCAs, will come in various sizes and operate as surveillance nodes and also attack drones performing offensive missions and firing weapons. We need a platform that is affordable so we can get some mass and not something too expensive that we can't afford to lose. We are doing design trades. 
It needs to be able to assist the mission of the NGAD system, and it will involve a weapons carrying capacity to work with a piloted aircraft. While the manned NGAD is expected to be ready for operations around the end of the decade, the CCAs could be soon, Hunter said. Industry is expanding R&D and ready for an acquisition program. The prospect of multiple, networked CCAs working in close coordination with a manned host plane introduces new tactical possibilities, in large measure because they will be networked to one another as well as to a manned aircraft performing command and control. Controlling drones from the air will reduce latency by not needing to send data through a ground station, streamline time-sensitive data and massively shorten sensor-to-shooter time. An armed forward drone, for instance, could autonomously identify a target, use on-board computer processing and enable a human decision-maker to find and destroy enemy targets from safe standoff distances. Advanced algorithms and AI-enabled data processing can analyze a host of mission variables from otherwise disparate or separated streams of incoming sensor information, 